everybody. How are you doing? Hope everyone's okay. I just logged in, so we'll see if more people will join. Hi, German. How are you? <laughs> Hope everyone's doing good. So I think word's been getting out. We will probably have more people join us today, so that's a that's always a positive. So, oh my goodness. Hi, uh, Claudia. Hola, como estas? How are you? And Melody, good to see you. I'm going to be saying hi to everyone because um, a lot of people have been telling me, oh, I missed the live feed, but I want to join today. So I'm so glad. Um, I'm so glad you're here. So uh, I'm just looking at my, I'm kind of watching myself just to, so I can see questions and everything else. And there's Melody. Hi, good to see you. So, um, so those of you that are new today, this is um, my technically my art room. So this is kind of a, my vision board that I update every so often. So I'm just going to talk a little bit while we get more people to join us. So, um, of course, my brother loves to give me little tchotchkes. So I have um, Wonder Woman. Um, another friend gave me this apron that I use when I do crafting. And um, just, you know, postcards, Marilyn Monroe, um, one of the... Um, memorial cards from when my father passed away, um, just little things here and there that inspire me or remind me, and then I have these little stains, you know, like, today I will trust my inner voice, um, I am bold and brave, and I certainly feel that <laughs> doing all of these live postings, um, hi, Cab, good to see you guys, um, and also when I'm a writer, uh, a friend of mine taught me this, to just write the story, so sometimes when I get stuck in my head, um, I have to tell myself that. So I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's, um, you know, trying to get through. I'm getting to the point where I'm just kind of scared to watch the news. I watched a little bit here while I was having lunch before I came on um, for the show. Hi, Sam. Good to see you. And, oh, my goodness, the numbers just keep climbing, and um, it's starting to get scary. I think the reality of what's hitting us um, I really don't want to leave my house <laughs> at this point until it gets better, and my heart breaks for Italy, and um, I have a couple of friends over there. In fact, I need to reach out to them um, through social media, and, you know, I, I just, I told my partner, we just have to take this day by day, and we just have to stay focused on controlling the things that are within our our everyday lives. Like, I can get up every day, I can prepare for the live feed, I can answer your questions. Um, oh, hi, SGA, good to see you guys. Oh, y'all are so great for joining. And, you know, we're here to be a place for you to come. So if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling kind of sad, if you're just the unknown, which is, this is a very different time that we've experienced. You know, you're welcome to join us on the daily feed. If you need me to be on here every single day, I am willing to do that. Hi, Alexa. Good to see you. So whatever you need. And by the way, we're starting to get more traction. Um, a lot of faculty have emailed me uh, in the last day or so. I'm just really impressed that we are doing these things, that we're reaching out to you guys. I submitted to them all of the questions you had from the first two days. And I have, I'm getting responses. So if you have more questions, if you have more concerns, let me know. And I certainly have my pen and paper handy. I will write down the questions or I'll go back through the feed. And I will let faculty, the administration know and send things already up. Have you heard they're toasting a vaccine coronavirus? Yeah, I, I saw that on the news last night as well. So German asked um, that they're a vaccine for a coronavirus. But they even said the reality is it may take up to a year before we actually get that vaccine. But I did see a news report where they are testing people, I think in Portland, um, that are, you know, willing to be that, willing to, you know, do that part. So, hi, Alexa, good to see you. Um, so, yeah, uh, but I, I, I'm so appreciative that you guys have questions, have concerns, keep sending them to me. Today I'm going to share with you some of the responses that I got. So here is my little, my little whiteboards. I love my little whiteboards. Um, and also don't forget to use the hashtag Alice Club 2020 so that if you have um, a meme or a post or something you want us to know about or if you get more information, you can certainly put that hashtag and we will check all of the social media, okay? Um, you do not have to be Latino to join Alice Club once we do have face-to-face -face meetings. We are open to all students. As we like to say, uh, we are for the Latina within. And if you've ever had a shot of tequila, 
you know there's a Latino in there, right? After a few drinks, it comes out. Yes? Okay, no. It's still a bad joke. Okay. I will work on that. All right. So our agenda for 319. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit more about self-care and some updates. Um, then I'm going to tell you about our RLC updates and the feedback that I got. Okay. And then if we have time at the end, if I haven't gone on for too long, um, I'll share some little let, um, uh, Latin card revoked trivia questions, and I just find them hilarious. So I pulled a few, and I might do a few each day um, as a way to end our our get-togethers, if you're curious. Okay. All right, so we talked last time about self-care, and I hope many of you are thinking about ways that you are kind of self-soothing, calming yourself down. Joan, good to see you. How are you? I'm so glad you're here. Yay. Um, uh, I have a professor that is Honduran, so um, I need to ask her lots of questions because uh, we were about to have her as a guest speaker when we came back from spring break. Um, so I know my students, I definitely want to know more about Honduran culture, and we do have, I think, at least one club member that is Honduran, maybe a couple of others. So um, in our club, we really are curious about other Latin American cultures because we do have a lot of Mexican students. Um, but you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to be Latino to join, and we really just want to help promote and embrace all Latino cultures. So we'll go from there. Ah, yeah, Claudia, she's there too. Wonderful. And um, so, yeah, back to self-care. So uh, we talked about block scheduling, and I meant to make you a nice visual of how I do my block schedule. I actually wrote it out, but I'll do kind of a nicer job of that and post it. Um, but I have to chunk up my day into certain activities. So I block out two or three hours throughout my day, and I set alarms on my phone, and when that alarm goes off, okay, I'm done with that activity for the day, and then I go on to something else. So this morning, you know, I did what I call my morning rituals. I don't like to call them routines, but what are those rituals? What are those things that get you through your day, that help you stay focused, that get you awake? Like for me, I need to do a little bit of reading. I need a quiet house. Um, I go and make coffee for the household, and I make myself my little vitamin drink. Um, I did get to journal this morning, so I always feel extra good when I get a chance to journal. And I got, I showed you my... Uh, my nice journal before, and my new pens. I finally broke out my pens. I did a little post on my private Instagram. Um, if you do bullet journaling, um, you can actually do a whole page where you just test pens. <laughs> so sometimes if I have new pens, or if I have pens that are dying, I might test them just to see how they feel on the paper, if they smear, what have you. Okay, so just even doing that kind of activity, as small and as insignificant as that might seem, Really, it occupies your mind. It gives you focus. So you got to find that thing that kind of will just kind of get you ready for the day, okay? And so um, the other thing, too, is I take my dog for a walk, and now she, she's she got, like, this really good internal clock. Yes, yes, rituals, not routines. Absolutely. And now her internal clock, she knows that when I get up and I put my sneakers on, she's like, oh, oh, we're going to go for walkies. Oh, there's a Frida. Hi, Frida. Hope you're doing good. And, um, yeah, so we get to enjoy our morning walk. It was a little rainy this morning, so we had to wait about half an hour. But, man, she was just whining, and I knew once I took her out, we went around. And, of course, my dog doesn't do well with strangers, so it's better to go when there's not a lot of people around. So we had a, it was a way to, for me to kind of wake up and warm up my muscles. I'm trying to be, now that I'm housebound, trying to be more mindful of physical activity. Okay, and um, in fact, Professor um, Professor Joan was happy to share um, some links of online yoga studios. I think her yoga studio is doing uh, live. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm afraid of my top. I'll talk about that in a second. And um, and I'll even share my yoga studio is doing live feeds. So I did got to do my yoga practice as well. And so again, it's one more thing that feels me makes me feel centered and makes me feel focused. And I've started doing some Zumba. I'm up to three dances now. Um, that's about 11 minutes of dancing straight, and that's exhausting. So I feel like I burned some calories. So I'm going to put a little playlist of the dances that I'm learning. So if you want to learn them as well, and then maybe when we get to a face-to-face, -face, we can have just a big Zumba party and do them all together. I don't know. I'm just kind of coming up with ideas as we go. Yay! Okay, so let's do that. So I will... Alice has a YouTube channel. And I will make a playlist of all the dances that I'm learning. I learn one new one a day because 
that's about all my brain can handle. And then the next time I do Zumba, I do the other two first, and then the next one, and then the new one. So, absolutely. Um, so if that helps you as well, so if it's just doing one little silly dance can help if you play soccer or if you, I saw there is a father-son in my neighborhood. They throw a football now in the afternoons, and for me it was so nice to see because I have memories of just my brother and my dad, you know, nothing else going on in the house, let's go outside and let's throw the football. So uh, hopefully you're reconnecting. It's almost like it's 1980s summer again, <laughs> and you got to stay housebound, and um you gotta, you got to find things to occupy your mind. So I know technology, you know, is very important, but please make sure you are taking time away from your technology. I've noticed that I, too, have to take a mental break. So I even have in my block schedule at 4.30, I schedule, I call it a nap, <laughs> but I meditate. But I've learned that when I lie down to meditate, I fall asleep. So I, I definitely have needed a nap lately. But I'm trying to do more sitting upright and just breathing exercises, just reconnecting with who I am. And then by six o'clock, when my partner comes home, then we prep dinner. Thank goodness he uh, loves to cook. Uh, so he does the cooking and I'm happy to clean. And so we've been eating pretty well, which is why I need the yoga. So, <laughs> cause those pounds will just add, add up. Okay. Oh, you nap at 1 p.m. Oh yes, I love, what is it about naps? I feel like we need to have naps back in our day. You know, it's funny when we were in kindergarten, we hated naps and I hated naps, but now, I seem to not be able to get through my day without a nap. And so I don't know when we finally do go back to our normal day-to-day, -day, I may have to just nap in my office. So don't, don't tell anyone that I do that. I close the door. So, Alrighty. So that's a little bit more about self-care. And like I said, I'll keep posting some videos. And as I come up with ideas, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to send an email to all the faculty. And I'm going to ask them to share what are some of the things that they do um, as part of their self-care. So I had asked this question yesterday, I think, uh, Sonia said that she does like face masks, facials, and um, the, the teeth whitening strips, which I think is great because I need to do that. Um, if there's any other practices that you do. Um, so, yeah, we'll keep, because uh, they want to participate as well. The faculty are so cute. They email me and they're like, how can we contribute? What can we do? So if um, I'll see what else you want to learn about them. Uh, you did your face mask this way. I need to do mine, so I'm getting I'm getting behind in all the things. Um, so yeah, but I did. I'm afraid to notice my red top. Um, my um, I guess technically she's my mother-in-law. It's complicated. Um, he's my boyfriend, but uh, his mom calls me her daughter-in-law, so I, I'll take it. And she loves to give me a lot of these Indian tops when we go to a lot of events, sometimes weddings, sometimes we've done Diwali several times, the Indian Festival of Light, and so she gives me some of these nice tops, and one of my projects at home is to go through my closet, and it's amazing the things you find at the back of the closet that you haven't seen, and I thought, well, where, where am I going to wear this? Well, why not here? So, kind of also helps me. No, I'm not Indian. I am actually a uh, fourth generation um, Mexican American, but my boyfriend is Indian. Um, his family, he was born in Singapore, and his mom um, was born in India. I can't remember the region. I know it's further north. Um, and then they moved to Singapore after um, a partition, after you know Pakistan and India you know became separate countries. Their families migrated to Singapore, and then that's where. Um, uh, she grew up and got married, and then they were the first to actually come to Dallas um, and start a business here. So, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely show me your dresses. Post them on Instagram. She gave me a couple of bags of Indian clothes, and so I'm going to go through them, and I might as well just wear a different outfit every day. I mean, I think I have enough of <laughs> them. Um, and they're also of the – and I didn't know if this was a thing um, – but his family, they're kind of a one and done with the saris and the outfits. Like you wear your outfit for the nice event and then you don't wear it again. And I personally struggle with that because if I have spent good money on a dress, like a prom dress, I'm going to find another way to wear it again um, or maybe upcycle it or something. So I'm getting into upcycling. So rather than wearing the same sari or the same top, I'm going to see if I can't modify it in some way or make a skirt out of it or, or something. Because it's beautiful material. Why wouldn't you want to wear it more than once? So that's probably what I'm going to do. Okay. All right. So let's talk about our next thing was, 
RLC updates. I got a, I bought new markers, so I have to do my little checklist. Okay. So we did self-care. All right, so let's talk about RLC updates. So you guys had posted some questions. So let me give you some of the answers that I got so you have that information. So one of the first questions, um, okay, you've heard that from your students as well about the Indian outfits. Yeah, I'm like, is that really a thing? Uh, I thought maybe it was just his family. Um, yes, I'm coming to that, Afrida. Yes, that's the second question. Okay. So the first thing is, let's see, I think the live feed stopped for a second, is will counseling um, be available, counseling services? Okay, hold on one second, let me make sure the feed is okay. Yeah, okay. I just like to double check. Um, I guess it's still kind of cycling right now. All right, so counseling services, I talked to them and the lady said that right now everyone, like I said, everyone is still talking and making decisions. They don't know yet if they're going to have counseling services actually on campus yet. Um, they're afraid that if even if they do their face-to-face -face appointments that they may have to, um, you know, of course self-distance there. So they don't know, you know, if everyone will be allowed back on campus yet. So everything is still up in the air, okay? Uh, let me try, hold on one second, let me try going back right in. Okay, there we are. So if your live feed freezes, then go out and then just come back in. Okay, so it says I just joined. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to give you this number to see, so you can write it down real quick. Um, if you are in crisis or if you are just getting stressed and you need to speak to a, a mental health professional, because I honestly, I certainly am not certified to do that. I am an empath. I am very empathetic to students, but I certainly um, do not have that background, so I certainly can't take that on. Um, okay, if he looks good for you, thanks, Joan. Thanks for letting me. Um, so write that down, 1-800-273-8255, okay? And, or you can text CONNECT to 741741. So you can do either of those. So if you're just having a night and you just need to reach out to someone or connect, you can certainly do those. Um, if you just want to, at least if you're if you're falling into depression, if you're feeling sad, at least join the live feed. That way, um, you can at least feel connected some way, um, and you know we'll do what we can to make sure that you're you're staying safe. Okay. All right. So I will keep you posted if counseling services does have on campus um, um, sessions and whatnot. Okay. Now. International students, this is uh, Claudia's question. You had asked about international students, what kind of accommodations or things. Um, you may already have this email address, but for international students, make sure that you send your questions to rlcworld at dccd.edu. So Claudia, if you're concerned about like your status or if you need to drop a class or something, I would email them um, and they have, that, that goes through the Multicultural Center and this is um, international student advisor, okay? So if you know of someone that is an F1 student or an international student and you have questions about your transcripts or what's going to go on in the, in the future, definitely send emails uh, to them, okay? All right, so that answers that question. Um, let's see. Hi there. I see more people have joined. Good to see you guys. All right, now. Tutoring, and this is a Frida's question. So she said she needs help for math. Well, right now, uh, the guy that runs the, the Learning Center, um, they're on the second floor of Medina Hall. They are still trying to figure out how they're going to do all of the um, uh, tutoring. Now, he did say, the guy that runs it, that they have had online tutoring already. They've already been set up for that. I have a feeling what he implied is that they're going to train more of the tutors to go into an online format. So he said he will let me know when he has more details, but are all of you aware of this um, community tab on eCampus called Thunder Duck Commons? Maybe you've seen it. Um, I've seen it and I kind of, you know, don't think about it, but when you log on to eCampus and you know at the very top it says classes, if you click on the tab that says community and then look for this link that says Thunder Duck Commons, this is going to be your resource page where you can find information such as tutoring. And I think that's where they'll probably do the online tutoring questions, chats, what have you. 
okay? So, Afrida, if you need help with math, maybe look there first, see if there's some information. I honestly have not had a chance to look at it yet. It's actually been a very busy morning for me. So as soon as I get a chance, I'll take a look. And like I said, the guy that runs the Learning Center, he will send me some updates. So people are still meeting. They're still making decisions. Um, so we can go from there, okay? Hey, Ruben. Ruben, how are you feeling? We know Ruben wasn't doing too well a couple of days ago. Um, email them. Yeah, work information. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, the other, I think the last question is, a lot of students had asked, is all work going to be submitted on eCampus? For right now, um, the answer is yes. Okay. Um, if you're professor asks you to submit it in a different way, I don't know, you have to take that case by case, but I do know that our spring break is until 329, okay, so by, I would say by Monday 330, um, March 30th, look online uh, for emails, uh, for um, communications from the school district, um, from the school district, from the, yeah, from the community college district, and, oh good, Ruben's doing a lot better, just a cough, well that's good, I'm so glad. That's glad to hear. I was getting worried because I didn't see you online the other day. I was like, oh, he's all right. Okay. So um, look for emails from your faculty. And like I said, I would make a list of all the classes you have, list the name of all the professors. If you don't know the name of your professor, then you need to find that out. <laughs> they should have a syllabus post on eCampus. Make sure you can get access to eCampus um, and make a list. See if you have a contact for them. See if they reach out to you first. I've already reached out to my students. Um, and then you can find out from there who is not getting back to you. And if you're just not getting enough feedback, you can message me privately or send me an email. And I'll, I'll send a message out to the faculty saying, hey, I'm not, students are not hearing back from people. Okay, so for right now, we're still kind of in a wait and see situation. So just take a moment, just be patient, but we will get through. Okay? All right. Oh, I love that everyone's uh, worried about Ruben, so me too. I'm glad he's doing better. All right, so I think that's really it for all of my updates. I, I've decided I didn't want to be on this for too long. You know, I think getting to the 40-minute mark is, you know, it starts to drag a little bit. So my last thing is, um, you know, again, if you have any questions you want me to ask, uh, I, I will certainly ask them. I don't know if we will have face-to-face -face classes in the fall. I would assume so, but like I said, until we know about the situation, until the um, we flatten that curve and until cases start going down, I have a feeling, um, you know, we're, we're just trying to be patient and um, hopefully by summer. I'm hoping that with, you know, the Texas heat and different weather, once we kill off this virus, um, I did see in the news in China the new cases are starting to go down for them, so that's a good sign. So it's possible that we may not come back until the fall for face-to-face. -face. So I don't know. But I, like I said, I will keep you in the loop, and I will certainly ask them that this is a concern that you as uh, students have. Okay? All right, so we've talked about RLC updates. So I thought for our last... Um, part today, maybe do a little bit of Latino trivia, okay? I do want to have more topics about Latino culture, and maybe I can ask um, Professor Joan there to, maybe she'd be willing to do something about Honduras, I don't know, so I'll talk to her offline about that. Um, I know that we're going to have other OLS officers be guest hosts probably starting next week. Um, Montserrat, who is our OLS vice president, um, has agreed to host, she actually has a cookie decorating business so she wants to support small businesses and maybe do like a little demo of her decorating her cookies and she's really talented so I really do want to support her and I'll talk to my other Alice events um, I know German I don't know if we'll have single them out or not we have to kind of accept that reality but that doesn't mean that we can't do something online for single de mile related um, so we'll figure that out. We'll, we'll keep uh, talking to each other. And there's plenty of other topics we can we can chat about. I know one of our OLS members, Sonia, she loves Frida Kahlo, and so do I. And I have taken some art history classes, so I do know a little bit about her. So if you want to do a day where we talk about art, if you want to see some of the crafts that I do, I showed some of my crafts last time. I'm about to embrace... Um, um, 
sewing. <laughs> I haven't sewed in a while, so that's going to be my next project. I also have an Easter wreath that I need to make. So I have a lot of things kind of going on at the same time. All right, so let's talk about Latino Card Revoked. I thought this game was just so funny, and the cards are hilarious. So I pick three at random, and let me uh, post the questions to you, and then you tell me. Um, I'll give you the choices, and then you can tell me which is the best uh, one for them, okay? All right, now this one involves a little bit of Spanish, so forgive my Spanish. I do speak it funny with an accent. Okay, so this is from Latino Card Revoked. It says, answer the question. So finish this toast. Arriba, abajo, al centro. What's the last part? Is it A, al dentro? Is it B, pa dentro? Is it C, ya toma? Or is it D, pa bajo? Okay, which one do you think that is? So I'll say it again. Finish this toast. Arriba, abajo, al centro. What's the answer? Does anyone know? Toasty for drinks? Frida says D. Melanie says A. Anyone else? Oh, okay. Well, I looked on the back. It says majority rules. So whoever, I guess maybe it's regional. Everyone is saying A. Pa dentro, uh, dentro. Okay, so it's up, it's down, out, and then in. That's how I was taught. When you go to Mexico and you stay with a host family, you learn all the curse words, and of course you learn all the drinking uh, games and the toast. So I thought that was funny. Oh, you missed the question. Um, the toast, um, arriba, abajo, al centro, and is it adentro? So I don't know if it's different in Honduras. Maybe it is. Oh, see, for jo Professor Jones, she says, pa dentro. Okay, for you guys, it's D. So I learned something. Okay, I was taught it was A, adentro. Uh, you said pa bajo? Pa dentro. <laughs> Did I say it wrong? See, I told you my Spanish is bad. Oh, my goodness. And it's out on the Internet forever. There you go. All right, let's try another one. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. And this is also majority rule. So you tell me what's more common. All right. What is something your mom would throw at you? Okay, A, a chancla, B, a hairbrush, C, remote control, or D, whatever's closest. Okay? All right, let me say it one more time. So what is something your mom would throw at you when she's mad? She's going to throw a chancla, a B, a hairbrush, C, the remote control, or D, whatever's closest. <laughs> German says chancla. <laughs> Do you guys know what a chancla is, for those of you that don't know Spanish? So, chancla is a flip-flop or her slipper, because you know Latino moms, they wear the slippers. My mom, too. My mom had um, gold trim on her slippers. D for sure, whatever's closest. <laughs> okay. Chancla or whatever is closer, yes. My mother, famously, uh, a guilt trip, I love it. <laughs> e. My mother, whatever's closest, she threw a watermelon once, and that became the famous watermelon story. And she has no memory of taking half a watermelon that was on the counter and just throwing it at my dad. So, yeah. Yes, and the guilt trip, absolutely. The guilt trip and the lecture are never optional. So, if you live in a Latino home, that's very common. So, um, but I, I love that. I love that we are all, as my brother says, we are chunk less survivors. Yes. <laughs> Uh, a pot, of, oh, that's right, we talked about a pot of rice. My mother, I realized she also threw cookies at me. She had like a tin of cookies and just threw them at me, and they hit right at my feet. So, um, yeah, um, they're not afraid to let you know when you've upset them. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right, let's do one more, because um, I don't want to keep you for too long, because we're already at the 30-minute mark. Okay. All right, so answer the question. And again, this is also majority rule, so whichever you think is the best answer. Um, you get your first tattoo. How does your mom react? Okay. A, she says, great. Now I know how to identify your body. B, she says, I'll light a candle for you. C, she says, doesn't say anything, just slaps you. Okay. D, she's excited and shows you hers. Okay, that's a whole different house. That's not my household at all. Okay. So if you get a tattoo, how is your mom going to react? Okay. Um... Is she going to do the guilt, which is great. Now I know how to identify your body. Um, is it, I'm going to light a candle for you, and she's going to pray. <laughs> um, 
Doesn't say anything, just slaps you? See? Oh, no, no. I'd probably be threatened with the arm, with the hand, the gesture. A, yes. I think mine would be A, too. Great, I know how to identify the body with the tattoo. I'm actually still too terrified to get a tattoo because I, it would just be lectures for days and guilt trips. She would tell me to go for the belt. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes, guilt all the way. All right. Um, so I guess we are not quite yet to that generation of, oh, let me show you my tattoo. So, no. But I do have friends that have tattoos and now have regretted those tattoos and now have kids. And it's like, how does that conversation go? So, I don't know. Um, Honestly, one, I was terrified of my mom to get a tattoo, and two, when I was in college, it was right around the time when a lot of people were getting tattoos, when it became like the thing to do, and the girls were getting the, they call it the tramp stamp, they put the tattoo on the lower back, and um, when the sorority girls, not to denigrate sorority girls, but I'm not really part of Greek life, but when I saw sororities and fraternities going to get tattoos, I was like, you know, I don't want to do the thing that everyone else is doing. Like, everyone is jumping off the ledge. Why should I? So my act of rebellion was to not get a tattoo. So I am a blank canvas for right now. But, um, we should get tattoos together. Oh my god, we'd be murdered and find us together holding hands with our tattoos. No, no. But I do love Hannah tattoos. And one of the nice things of joining a, an Indian family is going to the weddings. And I, I went to a wedding, Indian wedding not too long ago. And I do know how to get access to the, the Mendy, the cones. So we should do, when we are able to touch each other and see each other, that didn't come out right. We could do practicing of the henna tattoos, so it won't hurt. <laughs> I don't know. Some people like the needles. I'm not a big fan of needles, and I heard it's not just the needle, it's the vibration. So there you go. All righty. Well, that's really all I have. Are there any other questions that you want me to post to the faculty and the administration? Um, we do have one question about uh, will there be face-to-face -face classes in the fall, so I will just let them know that you're wondering, wondering about that. Um, I will tell them you're going to keep an eye out for the online tutoring, okay? And um, if there's any others, you can send me a message uh, offline, okay? And, you know, I hope you guys are doing okay. You know, stay, hang in there. Make sure you are doing things different in your routine. Make sure you're mixing it up. Now that we're going to finish this feed, go and reward yourself, do something nice, get some fresh air, whatever it is that you need to do. Okay, so we will keep checking in, and tomorrow I'll come up with more feedback, with more topics, and we can talk more about Latina culture if you want. I'm happy to do more questions um, or show you, show you more stuff. I was thinking maybe we could do a little bit of um, breathing techniques um, tomorrow. Maybe I might move to a different location in the house and maybe do a little bit of meditation, what have you. So, all right, yes, thank you. I'm just going to call you Professor Joan, it's just easier. Um, so good to have you, Joan, on here. And everyone, everybody stay safe, and I will be in touch. And um, hopefully I will see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.